So when you were president of Pawnee Nation College, how did you think about and plan for the future of the institution? Well, unfortunately, um, as with so many ventures, um, the, the future sort of rested on what kind of fundraising the, the institution could do. And so we always had a strategic fundraising plan in place. And sometimes we had the people in place to be able to carry that out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we didn't. Um, I know that after 2007, we received um, a Native American Career Technical Education Program award for two and a half to three million dollars. And once that grant was funded, I was absolutely exhausted um, and really started, started getting very burned out. But what started happening is that, that the, some of the trustees saw that and other uh, staff members of PNC saw that. And so we became uh, a very integrated kind of team, whereas before it was just kind of me being sort of lone wolf guy mm -hmm. doing all the grants myself or maybe with one or two other people. Um, it became more of a team effort to try and do outreach to foundations and as well as work on some of the other federal grants. And so unfortunately, the future of the institution was always in a bit of a limbo because we never entirely had the fundraising in place to to know that the future was certain, mm -hmm. right? And so there was this always this tension, this edge uh, to things because even though it was wonderful to have federal funding, it was soft money, yeah. and the Higher Learning Commission does not. Speaking of accreditation, they don't think of soft money as permanent sustaining funds, mm -hmm. and so there was always the battle to get a financial. Um, initiative established by the tribe that could potentially fund what we were doing. And there was always a kind of gentle person's agreement about um, at the point in time when, when the Pawnee Nation establishes uh, a full-blown gaming center that certain percentages of those monies would be dedicated to the operations of the institutions. And that, agree that, that gentle person's agreement was in place but was never fully implemented because there was no center established that was big enough mm -hmm. to be able to provide that opportunity. Right. And so there was always that kind of tension that, that was working. And so while that was always part of the ongoing narrative, there was always um, outreach to foundations and outreach for different projects and outreach to federal agencies for different projects. So that was sort of the landscape and whatever uh, kinds of narratives unfolded in those different landscapes was going to determine the answer to your question about the future mm -hmm. of the institution, right? Yeah. And so um, with, with the Department of Education funding that was quite significant, the institution has been able to grow and, and by the time I left we had graduated 23 students with associate degrees mm -hmm. or GEDs in the matter of the three years that, that we had been able to implement, three to four years that we'd been able to implement the program. You know, I mean, there was some sense of fulfillment of that. And then seeing some of those students uh, go to institutions like the University of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and, and other regional places and get bachelor's degrees has been fulfilling as well. So it, it, it certainly had its wonderful moments, even though it was tremendous work at all times right. and was, of course, 24 hours a day.